Okay, uh, good afternoon and welcome to eLearning Web class. Uh, what we'll be doing next one hour, uh, we'll be discussing about uh, the attribute that we have in BGP. As you all know, BGP uh, are used as a policy based routing protocol uh, to implement business policy into your network, right? So normally, uh, if you see the network, either service provider or enterprise network, we use BGP uh, when we need to connect uh, external networks in terms of uh, connectivity with different AAs. So to be able to understand this presentation, definitely uh, we expect you know a little bit about autonomous system numbers, uh, a little bit about routings and all, right? So before I move on, a uh, little bit of introduction about myself. My name is Nurul Islam Roman. Currently, I'm the Senior Training Specialist now in APNIC. Uh, as you can see on the uh, slide, I have got uh, interest on few topics that listed there. So if you have any question uh, with context, feel free to ask your question on the chat box. So normally, we expect lots of questions on the chat box, and this is how we'll make the session interactive for you. And to ask the question, you don't need to wait uh, till the end of the presentation, you can uh, just ask your question in the chat box. I'll try to keep my eye on on the chat box so that I can answer your question as quickly as I can. So the presentation that we'll be doing today, uh, as an overview, we'll start with uh, the attributes, what is an attribute in BGP. And then we'll try to see some well-known and optional attributes. As you, as you probably know, BGP attributes are classified into a number of category. Well-known uh, and optionals are one of those categories, right? Then uh, we'll look into some attributes. So for example, AS path, how AS path uh, uh, ensure there will not be any loop in between uh, the BGP updates when it goes from one AS to other AS. Uh, how BGP handle the next hop, next hop in IBGP and eBGP scenario. What are the best current practices uh, we use for next hop in BGP. Then uh, we'll see some uh, other attributes in BGP, say for example, uh, origin, local preference, uh, MED and community and so on, right? Then finally, we will try to see BGP uh, path selection process. How BGP select the path? There is a common getting sound trouble. What happened with others is that everyone uh, getting some problem with the sound. If the sound issue is for everyone, then probably need to look into it. Otherwise. I think probably uh, Mr. Mohsen, you just look into your sound preference and probably your network connectivity. Okay, let's move on. All right, so BGP attributes, so how we define BGP attributes. As you know, uh, BGP attributes are very useful to manipulate the best path selection process in BGP. Okay, as you know, uh, the routing protocols that we normally use are classified into two class in general: IGP use within the network and EGP used in between network, right? So we define network as an autonomous system. So when we use routing protocol in IGP environment, so within the network, uh, the best path selection process within the network probably different than the best path selection process in between network, right? With an external network best path selection process can be different. How it can be different within network and how it can be different uh, different uh, uh, to the external network. 
In internal network, we select the best path based on the actual path cost. That includes uh, probably the delay, sensitivity, and other factor from source to destination. So normally we call in IGP. Uh, when IGP select best path, they select best path based on the actual cost of the path. Right? They look into the metric. Right? So by looking into the metric, uh, IGP select the best path. And when you need to manipulate the best path selection process in IGP, it is a bit difficult because uh, uh, to select the best path in IGP, all the routers should follow the same best path selection process, especially if you use OSPF, right? All the routers within the AS need to select the same sort of uh, uh, metric uh, to select the best path. So that's why best path selection process in IGP that includes all the routers, right? Whereas, in some situation, you need to select best path in different, different scenarios. So for example, with this particular neighbor, what will be my best path selection process? But with other neighbor, you can use something else when you select the best path, right? So yeah, so, <clears throat> so BGP is a protocol that is very very scalable in terms of if you need to manipulate the best path selection process and in bgp uh, the way they select the best path they really don't look into the actual path cost of uh, the path they look into some factors right we call it attributes we don't really call them matrix we call them attributes so by looking at the attribute bgp select the best path when BGP select the best path by looking at the BGP attributes, those attributes in BGP can be manipulated very, very easily, right? And, and uh, it will be very easy to implement even company best path selection process when you do uh, routing with different, different uh, organization in terms of, you know, defining as a different, different AS. So, in summary, uh, BGP use attributes uh, to select the best path and uh, in BGP manipulating the BGP attribute is very uh, sort of uh, user friendly and this is how you easily can manipulate BGP best uh, path selection process so that we can implement organizational business policy. So BGP is all about uh, implementing business policy into your network. Okay. So so when BGP select the best path, they don't really consider only one attribute to select the best path. So they consider a number of attributes, right? So we need to know those attributes BGP use to select the best path so that we can uh, manipulate the BGP path selection process, right? So how we can know uh, those attributes in BGP to manipulate the best path selection process? All the attributes that we have in BGP are normally classified into well-known uh, attributes and mandatory attributes, right? Within well-known, some of the attributes are discretionary attributes, some of the attributes are optional attributes, right? So how we define really those uh, classification, what is well-known, what is mandatory? Let's have a look how we can define those. Before the definition, the attributes that BGP has got, uh, if we want to see in a sort of, uh, you know, you know, visual uh, impact or visual sort of graphics, how you can classify them. On the left, we have all the well-known attributes. On the right, we have all the optional attributes. Okay. Well-known attributes are basically those attributes. Most of the BGP implementation, they knows it and they implement those, right? And optionals are uh, some attributes, probably all the BGP implementations they knows, but probably they don't consider those, right? Let's see the definitions. And on that slide, what it, it will give you, it will give you a sort of a comprehensive idea on those classifications, all those BGP attributes, how we can fit them, right? So for example, as path, uh, next stop, origin, they all belongs to a uh, well-known category and within well-known there are two further category could be mandatory and discretionary, right? And if you see, 
S path, next hop, and origin, those three popular ones are uh, sorry, belonging to well known mandatory attribute, right? And on the other side, discretionary uh, in well known, for, for example, uh, local preference and atomic aggregate. I'll explain all those slowly, right? So let's define uh, <coughs> those attribute type. Well known attribute. Well known attribute must be recognized by all compliance of PGP implementation. As I said, all compliance of PGP, they must implement those well known attribute, right? And those attributes are propagated to other neighbors. So all those well-known attributes from one BGP neighbors to other BGP neighbors, they all propagate those. Okay. So within well-known, there are two class, mandatory and discretionary. So what is the difference between mandatory and discretionary? Mandatory means uh, all those well-known attribute definitely like, you know, BGP implementation, all the BGP implementation, implementation, they must use it and when they send the update, on the update they also need to send it, right? So they have to implement it when they receive it and when they send it, they also need to include it. But discretionary attributes, right, they must implement but it doesn't mean they have to pass it to the others uh, on the update message, okay? All right, so those are the definition of well-known. Now, optional attributes. What are the optional attributes? Well, optional attributes are recognized by some of the implementation, right? Uh, but uh, we can't expect like everyone, all the vendors, they should or they will recognize those things, right? Optional attributes, uh, Optional attributes like, you know, even though the BGP implementation, when they don't understand that, they don't recognize that, well, it, they need to probably pass it or they cannot pass it, right? Based on that, we also can do further classification. So, with the optional attributes, the transitive attributes are those that even though I don't implement it or in my routers, they don't implement it, right? They can just ignore those. But if it is a transitive attributes, then they can ignore in their implementation, but as an update, they cannot discard it. As an update, they need to carry it to the next peer or next BGP routers, right? Those are the transitive one. So even though you don't, you don't sort of uh, uh, acknowledge it, you don't utilize those, but you can't discard those. You have to forward it to the next uh, PR. On the other side, non-transitive attributes are those, if you don't implement it, if you want, you can discard it. Not, not necessarily you have to send it to the next PR. So those are the non-transitive. They don't send it to the next PR, right? As an example, community attribute is optional transitive attribute. It means from my upstream, if I receive any community attributes, not necessarily I have to action on it, right? If I don't want to action, I just want to, uh, no, I just ignore those. But if it's a transitive attribute, so I have to pass it to the next router so that if they want, they can implement it, right? Community tagging. So this is how, for example, from a tier one ISV, if they tag any BGP attributes, right? It goes to the tier two and from tier two, even though they don't have implement it, they can carry it or they can send it to the tier three ISV, okay? And non-transitive, so for example, MEDs, MEDs are non-transitive attributes. It means when you receive it, right? Not necessarily you need to send it to the next peer. You just use it if you want, otherwise you discard it. Okay, that's what non-transitive attribute. That is why MED is only significant in between two routers, in between two AAs, not router, in between two AAs. Okay, behind, behind that AAs, probably MED doesn't have any significance. Okay, after the definition, let's have a look into all those attributes. So for example, one of the very uh, important attribute that BGP has got, which is a SPATH attribute, right? A SPATH is well-known mandatory attribute. So every BGP implementation, they must uh, implement that and they must use it. And in the update, they also need to include that A SPATH attribute. So what is A SPATH? If you see uh, in our topology diagram, 
AS400, so AS100 in here, right? Connect to AS200, from AS200 it goes to AS300, and from AS300 it goes to AS500. On the other side, there is AS400 also connected. Now, if any prefix, say for example, uh, 180.10.0.0 slash 16 has been originated on AS100, right? By a network statement or an aggregate command, right? Uh, then uh, this prefix advertisement will come to AS200. Then AS200 will forward it to AS300. That's what we call prefix has been originated on uh, AS100. Prefix 200, or uh, sorry, AS200, what they are doing, they haven't originated that prefix announcement, but what they are doing, they announce it, announcing it to the next AS, which is AS300, right? And this is how if you look at AS500, in the AS500 BGP table, we can see prefix 180.10.0.0 slash 16 originated on AS100, then it goes to AS200, then is AS300, right? So this is what the AS path that we can see in here. So AS path is an attribute that tell a BGP router through which AS that prefix has been traversed, right? So this is how on AS500, AS500 can determine to reach AS, uh, to reach prefix 180.10.0.0 slash 16, how many AS path I have. It means via which AS I can go as a transit. All right, so AS path attribute actually used in BGP for uh, two different purposes. Obviously, the number one is loop detection, right? So AS path attributes are used in BGP to make sure or to check whether there is any loop in BGP or not, right? And the second purpose is uh, to select the best path. So obviously, when uh, BGP select the best path, uh, they look at the prefix and by looking at the prefix they see to reach to that destination which AS path I have and if I have more than one path which AS path has got the shortest path on the list it means small number of AS on the list so smaller the list preferred the path right according to the AS path attribute so as for that it has got two paths, uh, two purpose, loop detection and best path selection. Let's see how loop detection function works. Okay, if AS100 has, uh, sorry, if within AS100 prefix 180.10.0.0 slash 16 has been originated, right? Then the advertisement uh, goes to AS200, then AS200 will announce that to AS300. S300 will announce it to S500. But if you see in our topology, in the topology, S500 is again connected to S100. So, in terms of the topology, there is a loop in the network. Now, when the BGP update comes to 200, goes to 300, 300 to S500, then from S500, if it goes to S100 back, then was S100 can forward it back to 200 and this is how there will be a loop in the S path right if they keep doing it forever but BGP will use S path to make sure this advertisement loop will not be happening how what is the logic behind that okay to prevent the S loop in BGP the logic is if within the S path any AS when they accept that AS path in their BGP table, they will check whether their own AS number is already in the path or not, right? So for example, in the, in this example, prefix 180.10.0.0 has been originated, it came to AS500. So in AS500, prefix 180.10.0.0 slash 16, origin AS is 100, then 200, then 300. Then if the prefix goes to AS100, then 100, what he will do? He will check. Well, my own prefix is already in the path, right? AS100 is already in the path. If it is there, then definitely AS100 will not accept this particular prefix advertisement, 180.0.0.0 slash 16, right? Why? Because then he will uh, know there will be a path in the, uh, so there will be a loop in the path, okay? So this is how uh, AS path attribute will ensure 
there will not be any loop in a spar. Okay. And in uh, best path selection process, as I said, they just count how many is number away. Okay. In the real internet, right, if you see the way internet is growing, IPv4 address is gone or running out. S number, which is 32 bit, is also running out. Sorry, S, uh, S number, which is uh, 16 bit, also running out. How? From a 16 bit AS numbers, how many uh, how many AS number we can generate? We only can generate 65,535 number of AS number, right? So, so already, if you see in the real internet, current internet, there are 50,000 AS are visible, right, up and running. And there are some AS number has been allocated but not been used. So another probably five six hundred uh, thousand. Then literally we have only eight or nine thousand AS left in a uh, sixteen bit range. So that's not enough to, for the future growth definitely. <clears throat> so we need a longer uh, sort of range AS number. So that's why ITF has introduced the new AS number which is thirty two bit in length. So when it is 32 bit in, in length, then how many numbers we can generate? Well, 2 raised to 32, which is almost equivalent to 4.3 billion uh, number, right? So which is likely a case, uh, we'll be never running out of address, uh, yes, number probably in future, okay? But the question is, if we have both 16 bit and 32 bit AS number at the same time, will there be any issues? Uh, will there be any problem? Well, no problem as such, but there will be some issues. What is that? When uh, you bought your router like 10 years before and or probably 5 years before, if your router operating system, when they compiled, they kept coded your router operating system, at that time the only AS number was 16 bit, right? So in the coding, your router operating system only accept 16 bit number, right? When you add a PR. So, for example, on your router, if you execute a command, router VGP and then AS number, right? And if you if you specify an AS number called 70,000 and enter, then your router will return an error message. What error message? Well, the range is out of the syntax and, and it's not accepting it. So, what is the issue? Issue is uh, not with the problem, not with the numbers, but your router operating system does not support the range which is outside 65,535. So that's what we call incompatibility, right, of the router operating system. If you upgrade the router operating system, if you can upgrade it, definitely the new version of the operating system, they support, you uh, know, wider or longer range, right. But the time when that uh, router operating system was compiled that you are using now, probably they didn't have 32 bit AS number. So that's why they don't support it. Now the question is, okay, if your router only supports 16-bit range and other router they support 32-bit range, right? So when they support 32-bit range and they are using a number which is also 32-bit, like they have configured their BGP with the command uh, router BGP uh, 70,000, right? So whatever the update they will be sending on all the updates or whatever the prefix you will be generating on that particular router will have the origin AS which is 70,000. When it comes to your router, your router will, will not understand, right? Because that, that range will be outside that router's meaningful AS. So that's what we call incompatibility. If those sort of incompatibility happen, then what your VGP will do? If your VGP doesn't understand any attribute, it just kill it himself. Right? It will just generate an error condition, send it to the neighboring router and just shut down the process, right? But that's not good. So this is what we call incompatibility. So in those, those incompatible situation, how we can work because this is not fair because of the number, new number we have, all the routers need to update their iOS, right? That's not fair. We should have a system in place to make it work. How uh, we can make it work? Well, <laughs> the process is the new router who will be sending a 32-bit number to the old router 
it's responsibility of the new router to translate it to a two byte range right, which is special number two three four five six and by changing the numbers right then your downstream router which is a sort of old router can deal with it right so we can explain those uh, translation things in a sort of another presentation but in bgp attributes we don't need to so <coughs> In BGP attributes, if you need to select the best path in terms of uh, as path attributes, so if you see the translation from this as is, is 70,000 goes to 80,000, from 80,000 is 300, and then it goes to 400, then you see prefix which is 180.10.0.0 slash 16, right? Origin AS is 23456, 23456. It doesn't mean, uh, right, in a, you know, all the or both the A's has got the same AS number. It's just a translation because actual AS numbers are different. But when it goes to the uh, old AS uh, 400, they will just count how many AS away. They don't need to look into the number itself. They'll just count how many AS away. So this is how still the AS path length will be maintained, right? And forward AS number, no issues in terms of path selection. Any questions so far? Okay, if not, uh, let's see in, in the BGP table. In the BGP table, if you see the 4 by the AS number, how it will look for your prefix like this, your next stop, and then you'll see on your AS path attribute, your 4 by the AS number will be translated into 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, if your router operating system does not understand uh, the longer number. Now we'll see the eBGP next hop attribute. What is the next hop attribute? Well, uh, in BGP, next hop attribute normally tells to reach to that uh, prefix which uh, interface you go via. To reach to that prefix which interface you go via. That's what the uh, concept of uh, next hop attribute. Say for example, uh, in this diagram, S100 has been originated prefix 160.10.0.0/16. When they have originated that prefix and advertised that to the next AS, which is S200, S200 had forwarded these things to S300, right? So from S300, any of the router they need to reach into S, uh, sorry, reach to prefix 160.10.0.0. Then how they will reach from here? Well, router C they will check to reach to that particular destination who will be the next stop probably on router c next stop is router b right and this is how they will go via so this next hop attribute is very very important for bgp and normally in a in a bigger network when you design a network next hop will or we make the next hop reachable via actually igp protocol or interior gateway protocol right so so next stop should be reachable through IGP within uh, our network. This next stop actually handle uh, differently by two different version of BGP, EBGP and IBGP, how they handle it. Well, EBGP, when they send the prefix advertisement, EBGP, they change the next stop by default. EBGP routing, uh, BGP, version ebgp protocol uh, or ebgp version of bgp when they send the bgp update to the next router via ebgp protocol they normally change the next stop to the outgoing interface they normally change the next stop to the outgoing interface so that's why you see from here prefix uh, 160.10.0.0 will go to s200 from s200 router a when he will send the prefix to S300 via eBGP between A and B router, right? So router A will change the update with the next stop of the outgoing interface, which is 150.10.1.1, right? So then update comes to router B. So if the router B look at the prefix 150.10.0.0/16, with the next stop, this interface 150.10.1.1 is the next stop. Now, when B will send the prefix advertisement to router C, and obviously within within that 
AS300, it will be IBGP, right? If you don't do redistributed to SPF. So when IBGP send it to out of C, then what IBGP does, IBGP, they don't change the next stop by default. They don't change it. They just leave it as it is. So that's why for prefix 160, whatever the next stop has been collected by router A, you will just send it as it is to router C. So when it goes to router C, what router C will do, uh, sorry, what router C will see as the next stop for prefix 160.10.0.0, router C will see prefix 160.10.0.0 slash 16. Next stop is as this one 150.10.1.1 IBGP when they send it they haven't changed the next stop to this outgoing interface by default no they haven't done it so that's why in router C next stop still an external interface right an external uh, prefix and sometimes when you don't advertise this point to point prefix anywhere in this network or there is no reachability of that point to point prefix into the network then what happened your next stop will be unreachable from here a foreign next stop next stop is unreachable when the next stop is unreachable definitely you will have an issue into your network right so that's why on the external router we have to use next stop self i'll explain that things you know in a future slide but at this slide ebgp next stop behavior is they change the next stop to the outgoing interface of its own router right ibgp they don't change the next stop. They just uh, send the update to the another IBGP PR with next stop unchanged. Okay. Next stop attribute is a well-known mandatory attribute. So all the BGP implementation, they must implement it and they must use it. Without next stop, you can't forward the packet. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay, what is the behavior of IBGP next stop? As I said, normally in IBGP, we would like to see, normally in IBGP, we would like to see what that is a question getting some trouble. Okay. What is the question within an AS? I haven't got the question from Mohsen. All right, so. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. So, IBGP means uh, when BGP is running within the AS. So, when BGP is running within the AS, so for example, uh, in the previous slide, from router B to router C, right? They are running within the AS, right? So when router B will send the next stop, or uh, will send the update message to router C, right? Router B will not change the next stop that he has collected from router A. So when that update for prefix 160.10.0.0 has been collected on router B, right? When that uh, update has been collected to router B, router B has collected that next stop from router A as 150.10.1.1, right? When router B will send it to router C via IBGP within the same AS, router B will not change the next stop at all. So that's why on router C, next stop is 150.10.1.1, right? Okay. And in some case, in, and in some case, when the point-to-point -point prefixes uh, are not advertised in any of the routing protocol, then the whole prefix here slash 64 in IPv4, sorry IPv6 or slash uh, 30 in IPv4 are completely unreachable. So since the prefix is unreachable, your next stop is also unreachable. Your packet will not be forwarded. Make sense, Mr. Mohsen? Okay. So, Normally in EBGP, what we do, uh, so normally in IBGP, what we do, we use, yes, you're right. So that's why, that's why what we need to do on the perimeter order, for example, order B, we, we need to use the command called next of self. 
if we use the command next of cell then only then only when router b will send the update message for prefix 160 to router c he will then change the next up to the loopback address of router b make sense is it clear if you don't use this command next of self on order b then it will not change it it will still keep the foreign next stop if you do the next of self then only router b will change it to the loop back okay so uh, in ipgp as i said uh, normally we would like to see the loopback address as our peering address because if you use the loopback address as a peering address, then if any of the link down, still your desktop will be up in BGP, right? So that's why we call it a recursive lookup. So to reach the next stop, if it is uh, loopback, we rely on OSPF or any IGP protocol. The IGP protocol, the IGP, so for example, OSPF, they'll ensure my next stop is reachable, right? Next, next hop best practice. So iOS default for external next stop to be propagated unchanged. That's what Cisco iOS default. What Cisco iOS does by default, they change external next stop unchanged to the IBGP PR if it's correct from an IBGP PR, right? So we need to uh, we need to tell the router right uh, how the next stop will be reachable. One option, as you said, we can use next of self command. And if you don't do it, right, then what happened when your router will do the recursive lookup, right, and, and through the recursive lookup, if they need to find out, it will consume lots of CPU process, obviously. But to be a, a, to sort of uh, use the best practice, we use next of self on the perimeter router. As a design rule, all the perimeter router, right, on your network, all the edge routers, when they collect the external prefix from the customer, they will do the next of self, right? And then afterward, within your network, all the external prefix, the next stop will be the loopback of the perimeter router. Okay. So that's what the next stop self command I have already explained. So yeah, that will force your uh, IBGP to change the next stop to the self. And when you do the next up to self, when it goes to the next perimeter router, right, or even border router, your border router will send that update to the neighboring AS routers by changing the next stop to the outgoing interface because on that place you're running EBGP. So you don't need to do anything. EBGP will automatically change the next stop to the outgoing interface. But on your upstream side, when their perimeter router will accept the prefix, they must use the next stop self as long as the prefix is within their network. Okay. BGP origin attribute. BGP origin attribute tells BGP how the prefix has been originated, right? Is that originated by uh, a network statement or it has been originated by a redistribution or by some other protocol? So in BGP, if you see in Cisco router, there are three uh, values that we can see uh, number one is obviously igp then egp then incomplete right so when you see igp it means the prefix has been originated by a network statement igp means a character i small character i uh, when you see the prefix uh, uh, tag origin origin actually origin tag is incomplete with a question mark it means probably the prefix has been originated into your network by a redistribution command from OSPF you have redistributed the prefix into probably BGP or probably the static you have redistributed into BGP right so then that's why that uh, origin tag is coming with question mark EGP is a legacy protocol before BGP but still, uh, you know, current BGP implementation, they are inheriting the, you know, historical code because they haven't done a uh, lot more, you know, much changes on the code in BGP. Still, they are 
carrying that uh, uh, origin tag EBG, uh, EGP. But nowadays we don't see EGP tag in the BGP table. Okay, you only can see either uh, I or question mark. Okay, so how you can look at the tag? So your origin code in Cisco order I equal to I equal to uh, IGP equal to EGP and question mark equal to incomplete right if you see in your bgp table at the end here then you can see how it has been originated either through uh, igp or through egp or through distribution okay is there any question bgp local preference what is local preference well local preference is an attribute of that that is used to select how traffic will leave your network right how traffic will go out from your AS this is what local preference attribute will dictate okay what it does say for example if you have a connectivity with ISPX if you have a connectivity with ISPY, right? Two uh, router that you have, from two router, you have got connectivity to the internet, right? So the router connected to ISPX, you collect all the internet prefix, and the router connected to internet uh, ISPY, you collect all the internet prefix. So right, both the router is getting full BGP feed. Then on router A, you have got the prefix from Google, on router B, you also have got prefix for Google, right? If you want your customer to browse Google via router A, then what you do, the prefix that you collected uh, from your upstream via uh, router A, you, you change the A, uh, local preference attribute in a higher value. We call it high pref. So for example, 120 or 150. By default, Cisco router leave the local preference as 100. You need to high prep the path. When you high prep the path with 200 on router A, right, and then on the other side, router B probably prefix from Google is default 100. Then, then those those prefixes will go to your downstream router, right? On the downstream router. When they receive any prefix from router A with 120 local pref and from router B with 100, definitely he will check or he will select 120 as the best path, right? But if you have IBGP running in between router A and B, then router A and B, they will decide themselves which prefix will be the best path uh, or which AS paths, uh, sorry, which router will be the uh, uh, outgoing router. And then based on that, only who win the path will be sending the local path to the downstream router. If, if there is no BGP, IBGP running in between to the gateway router, that's fine. So the downstream router will decide. Okay. There is a question. We are always implemented local pref inbound. Well, what I said, outgoing traffic, right, in, in, in routing system, how you manipulate outgoing traffic? To manipulate outgoing traffic, you need to implement inbound announcement. So routing, tra routing uh, announcement and traffic announcement are opposite, right? If that route advertisement coming inbound direction, then that will dictate or that will manipulate outbound traffic so for example consider consider a very simple example if i need to invite you to come to my home tonight for a dinner right what i need to do you are the traffic will come to my home tonight so you come to my home for a, di for a uh, dinner but before that what i need to do i need to send my home address right so home address or my prefix that i send it to you will be on this direction which is 
you receive it right for your case it will be inbound right so when you receive that prefix advertisement from me as an inbound direction then only the traffic from your network can come to me as an outbound direction make sense so to manipulate to manipulate outbound traffic to manipulate outbound traffic right traffic leaving your network what do you do you manipulate incoming local pref make sense okay Here is an example. Uh, we have got S uh, two hundred, S three hundred, right? They are connected to S four hundred. Okay, and on the on the top we have got S one hundred. So S one hundred is connected to S two hundred, S one hundred is connected to S three hundred. Then S two hundred is connected to S four hundred, S three hundred is connected to S four hundred. So what happened? Prefix 160.10.0.0. When uh, prefix has been originated from S100, that prefix advertisement will come via this direction and also via this direction. So, on this S400, to reach this prefix, I have got two paths: one via A, other one via B, right? So, when the route advertisement comes in this way. By default, the local pref will be 100. Same way, on this way, it will be 100. So, if local pref is equal, then the other attribute will be used according to the sequence to select the best path. But if you want to manipulate that from your AS, right? How traffic will leave from your network, right? When the when the advertisement comes, and after that, how traffic will leave from your network? What do you do? You control or you manipulate incoming routing advertisement. How? In this side, when you, router B collect the prefix, you high prefix, or on the other side, when router uh, A collected, prefix, A collected that prefix, you down prefix, right? By doing that, when the prefix goes to router C, definitely router C will select this one as the best path because it has got higher local pref. Make sense? Okay. MED attributes. Uh, MED attributes is actually uh, used to control incoming traffic into your network. How you can control incoming traffic uh, into your network from external network, right, or external AS. But mind it, MED only only applicable in between two AS. MED doesn't go beyond one AS, right? It doesn't go to the remote AS. Only neighboring AS. Okay, so. What do you do? Uh, when you need to control your when you need to control your incoming traffic, how traffic will reach into your network when you send routing updates to the external uh, neighbors, right, or uh, your immediate neighbors, you manipulate the MED attributes, right? And by manipulating MED attribute, you send that uh, control uh, message to the neighboring AS. Then from the neighboring AS, when the traffic comes, it can be manipulated. Okay, let's see the example here. Okay. In here, what you are doing, you are controlling the traffic from these two router A and B, right? What are you controlling? By changing attributes on router A and B, you want to make sure when traffic comes from AS200, they will come via this path, right? For that, what do you do? What do you do? When you send the routing advertisement, routing updates to AS200, you change the MED to the lower value. So on router B, when you send the update to router D, you change the value to lower one. So for example, uh, so 50 right and then the update that you send via a, a router a to c you change it to say 100 right so what happened lower the value will be winning and as i said if you if you if you manipulate the med from here but on the other side 
if they need to overrule that rule and if they change the local prayer from there then your MED will not be significant your MED will not work then because on the other side they have got control as well if they change it again to local prep, they, if they change the local prep, then from their network, probably your policy will not be implemented, right? So control is in every place. So that's why to control incoming traffic from 200 to S201, what do you do? You control or you manipulate outbound routing advertisement, okay? Make sense? BGP community attribute, what is that? <laughs> community attribute is a tagging mechanism, right? This is how you tag the prefix. So, so if I if I bring the same analogy in here, okay, before probably there is no slide on that, or no diagram anyway. So if you see all those uh, uh, traffic manipulation technique that we saw so far, BGP, uh, uh, local pref and MED attributes. Local pref is within the AS, MED in between two AS. But if you need to do traffic engineering across the whole internet, so for example, not with, not only with the neighboring AS, but with the remote AS as well, right? How you do the manipulation? Well, remote AS, so for example, in this, just you know, consider in this way to understand uh, community attribute. If you have got uh, connectivity with a tier 2, right, a tier 2 ISP. So you have got one connection in Singapore, other connection in US, right. So what you want to do, you want to send and receive all the traffic to US network via your US, US link and all the traffic to Asian network via your Asian link, which is Singtel probably, right. So when Singtel will send all the prefix to you, they will not only only send the prefix originated in Asia, right? They will send all the internet prefix, for, for example, if you, if you ask them to send that full bit. And they haven't tagged it, which prefix are originated in US, which prefix are originated in uh, probably Asia, right? What they can do uh, based on their connectivity, which part of the world they are connected, if they tag their prefix with any tagging value, right? And on the other side, in US as well, the ISP you are connected, they will also tag their prefix with the tagging value. Then when the prefix comes to your network, then easily you can find out, okay, tag used for US network, match community, and then you can use your local pref attribute, like set uh, local pref and make it as a preferred path, right? So this is how, uh, you know, all the upstream can tag their prefix, right? And to use the community, what upstream can do, upstream only can tag. And in your network, you have to identify the tag and based on the tag, you have to action on it, either change the local pref or any other attribute that you want to change, okay? So community attribute is very, very uh, powerful attribute that can be used across the internet to manipulate the traffic, right? And in community attribute, uh, initially it was 16 bit in length, now it is 32 bit in length. So if you see the standard that normally the ISP is used, first 16 bit they use as an AS number and last 16 bit they use as a tag of the community, right? So this is how uh, you can manipulate traffic into the internet in, in environment. Uh, if you if you go and check uh, with your ask team, most of the tier one and some tier two as well, they have a standard community tag, right? Based on the tag, they identify the traffic. And if you need to have any traffic engineering requirement based on, you know, you know, sort of uh, global, uh, regional, you uh, know, sort of geographic region in the world, what you can do, you can check your, with your ops team and ask them how they tag it, right? And if you understand their tagging, how they tag the traffic, based on the that, you can do your community match and do your traffic manipulation. It's very easy. <coughs> In that way right so we had a look on all those <coughs> attributes so now the question is how BGP will select the path based on the attributes as I said <coughs> BGP select the path based on BGP select the path uh, based on a number of uh, steps <coughs> first of all on step one they prefer the highest weight right 
then they prefer the highest local preference then they prefer the origin uh, locally then they select the shortest S path and then afterward uh, they prefer IGP then EGP then incomplete then they prefer MED so this is how there is a sequence right so in your router now you need to decide uh, like uh, how you want to select the uh, or how you want to manipulate the path so definitely in your router when you manipulate the, or when you want to manipulate the path you will prefer to use higher priority attributes for that right you obviously uh, need to use the higher priority attribute otherwise if you use any lower priority attribute and if there is any higher priority attributes that are already there then the higher priority attribute will be winning compared to the lower priority attribute okay well that's the end of the presentation for today so we discuss about the bgp attributes and how those attributes can be used to manipulate the path okay so finally uh, i'll give you an url here that url can be used uh, to, to give us a feedback and obviously since we are at the end of the presentation if you have any question you can ask your question you can try to answer your question okay So I'll try to sort of uh, give you or type the URL that you can use to send your feedback. Okay. Your feedback is very important for us because this is how we'll try to improve our future e-learning session. So that's the URL you can use to send us the feedback. So when you finish the feedback, then it will redirect you to an FTP site, right? From that FTP site, you can download the presentation material today. Okay, so is there any question by any chance? Well, if there is no question, then I uh, hope the session will be useful for you and, and, uh, and hope to see you in our future 